our beer blogger, Sean Nordquist, is back with another lesson on the art of the hops. Good morning, Sean. Good morning. <laughs> it is an art, right? It's absolutely. an art. It absolutely is an art and a science. It's an art and science combined. <laughs> we're going to talk about that. We also, at the start of the show, we were very excited. It's National Chocolate Day. Were you yes, excited about that? I was that? very excited about that. I love chocolate. <laughs> so much so, you brought kind of a chocolate flavored somewhat. There's chocolate somewhere in that beer, I right? Did. And actually, we'll start right off with that. Um, you know, because it is National Chocolate Day, this is actually a milk chocolate porter uh, from J-Dubs. Oh, actually, smell it. You can right? smell the Would chocolate. You like to smell I know. Yes, I gotta you smell, smell it. it. You can't taste oh. it. Oh, oh, you man. really can't. You smell it. Oh, I can. Now I want to taste. Mm. Oh, that's really smells that's good. That's just um, that's right down in Sarasota from from J-Dubs. Um, they're a, a local brewery, uh, and that's and one of the things I liked about talking about all the different kinds of chocolate is a lot of those same. Uh, same principles apply to making beer. You get all kinds of stuff that people think, oh, I would never imagine that in a beer. Yeah. And yet we've got some stuff here that you probably never would have thought that a beer would have that kind of flavor. Well, and what I love about this, this is a real dark beer. I would assume mm -hmm. that it's real heavy, but that actually, it's actually, this is something that I would actually enjoy. Oh yeah, this is great. You know, it's only 5.6% alcohol, so it's not gonna, you know, it's it's not a real big, mm -hmm. big strong one that's gonna knock you over. Yeah. And it goes really well with chocolate and uh, other and desserts and things like that. Well, I think do you we taste still it? some chocolate somewhere. Let's see if we can find it. Do you taste the chocolate? Yeah, I mean, you can just a little bit of it. It's just enough. Huh. Very good. Yeah. I like so it. then at the other end of the spectrum, we have something really nice and light. Uh, this is great for summertime. This is called Hell or High Watermelon. Uh, <laughs> it's and this is out. Of, um, this is from 21st Amendment Brewery in San Francisco. So this. This is a really nice uh, light. It's got fresh watermelon in it. So you get a lot of those same flavors, a lot of that summertime. Uh, yeah, yeah, and, it's yeah. a, and it's a wheat beer. So it's it sort of yeah, fills a couple smell, different, you can smell it, yep. I like the chocolate oh, one better, again, I'm gonna be honest. I can smell the watermelon. <laughs> I, I, I never would have thought I would have liked a dark but beer not better. But many, not many people would think, oh, watermelon beer. Th yeah. They just wouldn't get that. You know, and again, then we move to another one. This is, uh, this is called Mango Even Keel. And this is from Ballast Point in San Diego. Yeah. Very citrusy. I'm curious. Um, oh, I think that smells really good. Uh, you know, these kind of watermelon and, and the mango, and then in fact, the, the third one you've got coming up here with those different fruits, is it similar to like a Hefeweizen with like the orange and the citrus? Is it just the same kind of concept that we well, see in, in a typical Hefeweizen? Some of the, actually most of the flavors you get out of Hefeweizen, those oranges and cloves and bananas, have, actually none of those fruits are put into the beer when they make it. it oh, actually, you're it, busting my bubble. Well, but, but, <laughs> but, but the flavors, they come from the yeast that's used, they come from the grains that are used, uh, and they get those flavors by playing with those different combinations. And that's one of the things that you know a lot of people will learn uh, through trial and error. But a lot of them learn because they go to school for it. Yeah. They learn, they go, they take courses on it. Um, and this you know, is a relatively new concept with the explosion of craft beer, right? It is. It's becoming you know it's becoming more and more popular. It's become real popular here in the Tampa Bay area. Uh, Hillsborough Community College is offering classes on serving beer properly, working in a brewery. Um, there are internships you know with mm -hmm. uh, with some of the breweries from uh, from colleges. So there's all this education out there that's happening. And it's not just as a pastime and a hobby, but as a career. This is something that you, when you go into a bar and you talk to a bartender, you want them to know what they're talking about. If you say, well, I normally like beers like this, mm -hmm. they can say, well, here's some ones that are going to fit that kind of profile. And I don't mm. want to miss out on this one here. So this, okay. uh, this is from Uinta Brewing in Utah. This is a cucumber farmhouse ale aged in gin barrels. Huh. So again, you've got a wide spectrum of flavors uh, that you, know, you wouldn't normally associate with beer. You know, First time I ever heard of a cucumber beer, people were like, well, that's just strange. But then you taste it and it's, you know, you can, and you probably you smell know. it in there. Well. <laughs> yeah. This is my second well, favorite. My first favorite is still the chocolate one. That's, a, that's my still go-to, which I'm shocked again to say that this is a dark beer. Yes. I'm so, I'm so many of these drinks that we hear about in the summertime include cucumber, include Absolutely. watermelon, but this is the first time hearing about these in beer. And this is great because they pair with meals very well. Uh, they pair, whether it's desserts, whether it's entrees, appetizers, hors d'oeuvres, you name it, there's a beer that's going to go with those uh, with those kind of foods. Well, and as we kind of close here, I mean, if someone is kind of interested in learning, really honestly learning more about kind of the craft beer scene, kind of what goes into it, where do you start? Where do you begin? Where should someone kind of look into first? Well, one of the great things to do is if you go, a lot of the breweries will have events where they have tastings. Uh, like I said, HGC has uh, mm -hmm. some tasting classes, both for people who work in the industry and also just mm -hmm. for the general public. Um, it's also a really great team building exercise. So if you get a people out of the boardroom, out of their cubicles, get them together over some beers, try a bunch of stuff that people have never had before. It's a lot of fun and people, it, and you know, it's one of those great social lubricants that bring you, know, gets people really talking <laughs> with each other and they, and you'll get people finding stuff that, oh, they, oh, I don't really like beer, but they haven't had the right one. Oh yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Have and you thought about making right a career out of this? You're pretty good. Hey, I enjoy, you know, it, it's, it's a lot more fun. <laughs> it's, it's, 
to just to do it when I want to. Sean, thank you so much for coming in again. Thank you. What's your blog again? If people want to check it out, that's beerforthedaddy.com. I love it. Beer for the daddy.